state law. That's the reality. Let, let me ask you a question about another issue that came up last night, gay marriage. At first you suggested that you don't think that state laws that legalize gay marriage should be, should be overturned. And there, there are states, both Iowa and New Hampshire, have legalized. No, George, George. No, George, the question that I was asked was, if I was president of the United States, would I come into the states that have passed that legislation and, and advocate either for or against a state law? And as president of the United States, that would not but, be my role but you later, to advocate but, but, for but, or against a right, state law. Right, but you, la you later said that you were for a constitutional amendment, and a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage would have the effect of overturning state law. Well, in my home state, I was the chief author of a constitutional amendment to define marriage as between a man and a woman. That's consistently been my position, and I do support that position at a federal level. But what, I, what, what the questioner asked me is if, as President of the United States, I would come into a state and advocate either for or against a state law, and I said that I would not do that. I believe in the Tenth Amendment, and I believe in federalism. But, but you believe in a constitutional amendment which would overturn the state law I believe in a constitutional amendment but also one thing I do know on the DOMA law that's the Defense of Marriage Act President Obama has said as as the president of the United States who swore that he would faithfully execute the laws of the United States he said he would pick and choose and not select, not enforce laws that are on the books. That's why we're seeing a movement toward a federal marriage amendment because President Obama won't even stand up for a law that, which would preserve marriage between one man and one woman. Congratulations on getting in the race. Thanks for coming in this morning. Robin? Thank you, George. All right, George, let's turn now to the latest on... We give you Michelle Bachman in her own words. You are now looking at a fool for Christ. I want people in Minnesota armed and dangerous. I know enough not to fight with a dump truck. Now we've moved into the realm of gangster government. We have gangster government. This is the crown jewel of socialism. This is socialized medicine. If we allow this to happen, group marriage, polygamy, and things much worse may not be far behind. We have seen an orgy. The government spent its wad. What is it that Barack Obama really believes? I'm very concerned that he may have anti-American views. It's great just to be able to get my message out. And if I get under people's skin, so be it. The Congresswoman still seems to be working on those ideas, particularly when it comes to whether President Bachman would sign Paul Ryan's Medicare plan into law. Now, she voted for that bill. I appreciate the fact that my colleague Paul Ryan has been serious about looking at this issue. I put an asterisk on my support in that. Well, when, I, when I first heard it, I thought, you know, it's really good to hear the truth just for once from a Republican. That's what they stand for. That's what they want. Now, regular folks out there across America, you need to know that you're on your own. If you don't have contacts uh, with the rich and the powerful in government, well, that's just too bad. That's what Republicans want. That's what all of their policies are all geared towards, favoring those with the big bucks. If you're, you know, the head of an oil company, you're in pretty good shape, an insurance company, Halliburton, KBR, Blackwater, a big bank, pharmaceutical company, you name it. They don't care about you. It's not complicated. Look at every policy that they have advocated since they've taken over the House. Take away health care from old people and kids. Defund federal agencies that look out for you, the consumer, whether it's big banks, oil companies, or those that make sure that you have clean water and food. Uh, as well, we have talked about many times before, we'll do it later on in this show as well, that they really don't care about climate change, never have. And when nature, as we're seeing right now, wipes out your family, by the way, unless we can cut some spending, you're on your own. And I think that's ruthless. We'll talk more about that later in the show. They'll tell you that they're going to give tax cuts to the wealthy and that, uh, well, you'll eventually get yours. This conservative philosophy is no longer a theory. George W. Bush cut taxes for the rich and look what happened. Jobs were lost. They didn't regulate banks. And, of course, the housing market 
went to hell in a handbasket. It took a huge surplus and turned it into the worst deficit in just eight short years. And no matter how they put lipstick on this big pig, if you look closely at the policies of the Republican Party, especially as of late, they don't care about the middle class in this country. They never mention the middle class. The middle class is a non-factor with Republicans. So it's nice to hear one of these righties step up and finally tell the truth because that is what they're all about.